Hey everyone, it's Sevi and the Nahida character and weapon banners just dropped. So as always, we're going to do a quick review of them. Think about their value and the characters and weapons that are on them. So starting with Nahida, Archon Collectors and Denja Enjoyers, it is your time. I'm very, very excited for this character. We already got a preview of her from the live stream and from what Genshin posted alongside her character teaser. She overall looks like an amazing unit that is designed to fit into any kind of Denjo reaction team. Firstly, as a Catalyst user, her auto attacks can be a source of Denjo application, so there's plenty of room to enjoy an on-field Nahida playstyle. Then there's her skill that links up enemies, and every time you trigger an elemental reaction on a marked enemy, or if a marked enemy receives damage from a Denjo core, aka Bloom, Hyper Bloom, Virgin, then all the connected enemies will receive Denjo damage. So basically, as long as you have frequent elemental or bloom reactions, Nahida's skill is going to be a great source of consistent multi-target Denjo application. And then lastly, there's her burst, which has a beautiful animation and a huge AoE, which will grant certain buffs to Nahida's skill, depending on the presence of pyro, hydro, or electro characters on the team. So aside from sharing all those cool things so far about Nahida's kit, Genshin also showed them materials that you need to farm for her. So quick reminder on the fungi on that pollen item that you need to collect. Do not use Electro or Pyro when you are farming those fungi because if you use those while you're farming them, they're going to end up dropping these different fungal nuclei items instead of the regular spores slash pollen that Nahida actually uses. So be very careful with that. Anyway, all of the materials here can already be pre-farmed for Nahida, except for what we can assume to be the upcoming Denjo Hypostasis boss material. So if you have Nahida guaranteed, it's going to be that boss material that you'll probably be pouring your resin into at the start of the version. Anyway, she is a main star of the show, and I've been spending some time with her on my early access server, and I'm really, really excited for you to finally experience her when she comes out. As usual, I'm going to have my first Nahida guide upon her release where I'll be able to discuss more in depth about her mechanics and build options. Moving on, the other 5 star is Yarmia and this is her third banner run. I feel like she keeps getting sidelined because Genshin keeps placing her banner close to or alongside an Archon banner. So if you're a low spender Archon collector that wants Yoimiya too, it almost feels like there's no good time to pull her, which is kind of sad. Anyway, Yoimiya isn't exactly a highly recommended meta pull, but she is still a strong DPS nonetheless. And if you really like her, she's going to be really satisfying to play with. She has very easy gameplay since she's mainly a left click simulator and she has accessible artifact and weapon builds. She also has gained good support and synergistic teammates since her first release, so comping her actually isn't too difficult. I've summed up my thoughts on Yoimiya and released an updated guide on her during her last rerun, which was just a few months ago actually, so if you're interested, do go check those out. I'm gonna have them linked in the description. As for the four stars, the four stars are a bit odd. They're not the first ones that come to mind for units that would be comped with a Dendro Archon. For longtime players as well, these are OG units that we have full or near full constellations of, so getting dupes of them is not going to be that fun. For new players, I generally don't think that they're exciting pulls unless you've really wanted to build Noel or Razor. Still, Bennett is one of those characters that anyone can benefit from having. If you don't have his first constellation yet, um, I hope that you're lucky enough to get it if you're pulling on this banner since it's what allows him to buff characters even when their HP is below 70%. And if you're a relatively new player that happens to pull his C6, I do suggest that you do some research before activating it. C6 Bennett's burst infuses melee characters with Pyro. This constellation has gained a notorious reputation that it can ruin accounts. I don't agree with that, but rather it will limit some of his synergies if you decide to activate it. Now there's no way to deactivate his C6 once it's activated, so just be super aware how it changes his synergy, especially if it does with your often comped characters. 
that you use with him regularly. As for Noelle constellations, getting her prized C6 is ideal since that's what makes building her very convenient and streamlined to building defense. And lastly, there's Razor who is generally a physical DPS. However, he does have these niche wacky builds where you build EM on him and then he can even be comped into a Dendro team or build a Dendro team around him, which some would know as the Sundering Furry team comp but even that doesn't particularly need constellations. So all in all, the four stars on this banner probably won't impress most of us. If anything, it would feel like a banner from the first version of Genshin were it not for the five stars on them. So I'm just hoping that you get the five star characters ASAP. Now let's discuss the weapon banner. The Thousand Floating Dreams weapon details were released yesterday so let's talk about that a little bit. The Thousand Floating Dreams is our first 5 star EM catalyst and it currently has the record for the highest EM secondary stat. It is very apt for the Dendro Archon and obviously it will be her best in slot weapon. Then for its passive, in essence the effect kind of works like the Gilded Dreams artifact set because its buff depends on the team composition. Basically teammates with the same elemental type as the holder will increase the holder's EM and those of different elemental type will increase the holder's elemental damage bonus. Plus it will give an EM buff to everyone in the party. So if you want the best birthday present for Nahida, especially in aesthetics, then it will be this weapon. Just know though that Nahida already has good free to play and gacha options going for her, so don't be pressured to pull this if you don't want to risk your primos on the weapon banner. However, I do think it's a pretty good weapon to lose to even if you're not aiming for it because aside from being strong on Nahida, catalyst users that are dependent on reactions, especially those who are triggers for Bloom and its variants, and those who benefit from aggravate damage can use this weapon to their advantage. Running alongside the Thousand Floating Dreams is the Thundering Pulse, Yarmia's signature weapon, and it's generally a good stat stick for other bow users. It's also not a bad weapon to lose to if you are targeting the Catalyst, although its absolute best users will be those who can take full advantage of its normal attack buffs. Going to the 4 stars, the Widsist is a really nice addition to this banner. It's a very strong 4 star weapon that can actually compete with 5 stars on many Catalyst users and it'll definitely be great for Nahida too. Then there's Rust, which is also a good consolation prize for Yoimiya if you don't get Thundering Pulse. At R5, Rust beats out most of the other options for her. A Favonius Lance, which is also on the banner, is also a good ER weapon, generally for supports to help battery your team and even situationally for some DPSs to help fulfill their own ER needs. And then the other two aren't really anything to write home about. The Flute is very meh and then the Sack Greatsword, while it is niche and has uses, it is easily outclassed by other Claymores. I mean, at least they're not the bell, right? <laughs> As always, I'm going to warn you that the weapon banner is risky at best and a scam at worst, but as far as weapon banners go in terms of 5 stars, I think that this is a pretty good one to pull on if you do decide to pull on it. Anyway, that's going to be all for this character and weapon banner review. If you are pulling on these banners, let me know down below. I wish you lots and lots of luck. I hope that you get your 5 stars as soon as possible and I am very very excited for the upcoming characters and the upcoming version. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!